1423. So this was um, an application permitted by planning committee in June this year, uh, so only a few months ago, um, which included the site visit. Uh, that shows the, the U-shaped building that was permitted with the car parking uh, all to the uh, eastern side uh, towards 21 Gorse Road. And they were the approved elevation plans of the, the previous permission. So this is now the proposed site plan as part of this application. So this, this changes the proposal from the previous application, which was for assisted living apartments uh, for elderly residents. This is now for a 68 bed care home provision. The, the building itself is much more linear in layout with the car parking now to uh, the fronting along Gorse Road with the, with the building set slightly further back uh, than the previous proposal. These are the proposed elevations. So the, the east elevation is at the top there, which would be the view from 21 Gorse Road uh, with that immediate bit in, shown in white render there at, at one and a half story. I'm sure like, Bob called him. Um, the elevation to the, in the middle there is the south elevation, so that's the front elevation of the side that would front on to Gorse Road. And then secondly, uh, so now we've got the west elevation at the top, which would front on to five Gorse Road to the side of the site, and the north elevation there in the middle, which would be look out back towards Ermine Close behind the site. This is the proposed landscaping plan that's been submitted. Um, so the previous permission permitted in June did not include all the full landscaping details with those left to a condition. Uh, however, this application now does so. So the proposed landscaping includes retention of the two large sycamore trees to the front on Gorse Road, additional hedge and tree planting to all boundaries and a walkable path around the building. Uh, this landscaping layout shown in front of you is also backed up uh, by the submission of a full planting plan that's been provided for the, for the site. And then uh, quickly on some uh, proposed visuals, so 3D visuals. So this is showing the view into the site from the entrance to the car park. And now at the top here, this is the view from uh, adjacent to number five Gorse Road, looking uh, sort of northeast uh, back across the front of the site. Uh, that's the main picture there. The, the pictures at the bottom show the view. So that's more from Omine Close at the back of the site. <coughs> The site is previously developed land and as seen in the pictures is in need of redevelopment having been vacant for over five years now. There is an extant permission on the site for a very similar scale of building uh, which was permitted in June 2020 by planning committee. This proposal changes to a care home provision from previous assisted living uh, accommodation as part of the extant permission. The application is considered acceptable in terms of impact on the character of the area and on neighbouring residential community. There's been no objections from any statutory consultees, including the council's urban. Uh, and there's no pre-commencement -pre conditions uh, as part of this application, but a construction management plan and all landscaping details provided up front. The application is recommended for approval subject to conditions. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chris. Uh, we now go, there are no speakers other than uh, Mr. Woolard on that. He was the applicant's agent. Uh, Bob, would you like to come in now, please? Mr. Woolard, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Chair. Thank you. Over to you then. Thank you. Thank you, Chair um, and members of the committee for the opportunity to speak in support of the application. Um, first and foremost, um, I want to endorse and commend your officer's report to you. It is clear and unequivocal in its recommendation to regenerate this sustainable, uh, sustainable brownfield site. Um, we've had a very collaborative approach with your officers and statutory consultees to get this scheme in front of you, and it's uh, endorsed by all the technical uh, consultants, um, and it's attracted no substantive opposition. You, you will appreciate it's fairly unprecedented to see a scheme of this type with no significant objections, um, and certainly matters relating to access, parking, drainage, ground conditions have all been fully assessed and agreed during the course of the application. Um, we know obviously a resident has raised concerns about the loss of a number of existing trees within the site and of course it's always regrettable to see trees removed um, but in this case those trees have been assessed they're not great specimens um, and their loss will be more than compensated for by extensive native tree planting within a fully managed landscape scheme. Um, the existing street trees are retained and their root protection areas 
have been fully considered in the design process. Uh, this has been very much a design-led scheme, both inside and outside, and, and really the starting point was to ensure that the um, amenity of neighbours um, was protected, uh, really trying to keep the building um, as central as possible within the site, reducing the height towards the edges and positioning main windows so that there is no um, overlooking of, uh, of, of neighbouring uh, gardens or windows. Um, both inside and outside, this is designed to be a home with care where residents can live with dignity and security. Um, the corridors enable staff a full view of circulation spaces. Internal spaces are legible so they're not confusing or, or disorientating. The um, individual rooms provide storage for personal effects to make it feel more like home. Outdoor space is accessible and designed to provide exercise routes, safe exercise routes um, with destination points. And, and the wings of the home can be individually managed and contained in the event of an infection or, or something like seasonal flu. Or, 30 um, seconds. Now, um, it's been designed in conjunction with care staff and the views of residents to ensure it's fit for purpose and to deliver a safe, homely and efficient care home. This is really some good news um, you know, within this, this pandemic that has really hit the care sector um, and this will achieve a home that's designed to protect our loved ones, the staff who care for them and the residents' families. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Bob. <coughs> Now, we're going to questions, first of all, to the applicant. Any, are there any questions to the applicant from members? Nobody's indicated in the chat function, Mr Chairman. Uh, Charmaine Morgan saying me. I did. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. This is to the applicant. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, can, <coughs> I, can I just ask, um, you mentioned that the um, whole plan was designed, Ned, and to, and to be fair, it certainly looks like that, um, looking at the building. Um, picking up an issue, we've had at Avery Lodge um, in my ward, uh, where it's also a narrow road leaving um, the site. Have the fire brigade been consulted or the ambulance services regarding access to the site? It's particularly relevant given... Obviously, with a site like this, you may well get far more ambulances coming in and out than you may not normally necessarily expect. Um, the reason I'm asking is because the problems at Avery Lodge are where a car, there's nothing to stop someone parking directly opposite. And in fact, interestingly, one of the photos has exactly that. And when they do, it then makes it extremely difficult for anybody to get in or out, but particularly emergency vehicles. No wonder if you looked at that and if you discussed it with the county council. Thank you. Well, the the, the county council, obviously, <laughs> the highway authority, were fully consulted on the scheme and and have looked at all aspects of um, the access. And and you're quite correct; it is a narrow road, um, so these things have to be taken into account. The positioning of the access is actually uh, because there aren't parking restrictions on Gorse Road itself, and as you say, um, residents are able to park um, opposite the site, um, uh, alongside the road. So the the, um, the access has been positioned so that it's directly opposite existing residential dropped curb driveways. Yeah. So it would be a fairly unusual circumstance for anybody to park on a on a dropped curb in front of a, a an existing access to to residents. So um, yes, that's been looked into, and we've also done swept path analysis um, to ensure that um, large vehicles um, of that size of, of um, fire engines, ambulances, can all get into and out of the site um, easily without um, you know unusual manoeuvring, shall we say? So um, yes, those things have been considered. Thank you. That, that's great, thank you. May I ask a follow-up? No, you can in a minute. Uh, Councillor Selby. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Um, the, the previous application, uh, now if this one is passed, will this take precedence over the previous application? Will the other one become redundant? Um, that's my question, please. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Bob, is that one you can so, answer? So, um, both permissions, this was approved, both permissions would be extant permissions um, our client 
for whom this is the the scheme that they are they've applied for are a, a care home operator and have every intention of um, building out this current application as I understand it the, the previous application that this committee considered and was approved in June was by an alternative operator who um, couldn't obviously complete the deal with the landowner at that time um, uh, our client um, has Tanglewood has um, done that deal with the landowner and will be progressing this scheme as uh, this application but but obviously the other application still remains as a as an extant permission thank you Bob Jackie Jackie Smith please yes thank you um, yes I think um, uh, on the question of the ambulances and fire brigade and so on um, the uh, uh, there has been a, a nursing home or a, um, a care home on that particular plot for some considerable time and um, there have never been any so far as I'm aware there have never been any problems so I don't see that there would be any problems now and it will actually uh, have a better access and quite a considerable turning area within the uh, part of the uh, um, the care home itself and uh, uh, they re they do take an awful lot of care I've um, had uh, uh, quite a lot of associations with them through families uh, within this particular um, care home provider and they've always been very very good thank so, you thank you <coughs> sorry sorry Jackie I didn't mean to Okay, perhaps, perhaps Jackie might come back. Charmaine, you wanted to come back with a further question. Yeah, yes, thank you. Um, two quick ones. Um, first of all, I must ask this because uh, I was approached and there was a concern that you mentioned the trees and the TPOs. Uh, sorry, the, the trees didn't warrant a, t a TPO. Um, was the mulberry tree in particular looked at? Because I have seen photographs of that and to be honest, I'm quite surprised uh, that that is actually quite a, an attractive tree. Um, however, I wouldn't necessarily say the tree uh, uh, would compete to provision of the home. But I just wondered if there was any chance of saving that tree, the mulberry tree, um, as I've been asked to, to ask. Um, the second th uh, question, uh, which is rather point relevant given our earlier uh, debate regarding the previous care home application and its sustainability. Um, my understanding is now, because of the A&E situation at Grantham, that actually this site, just to, to remind members, would be now 27 miles from the next nearest 24-7 A&E. Uh, can you confirm that? I don't know whether that's a, that's a relevant uh, planning question, but yeah. Bob or so even Chris. I was going to say, I'm, I'm happy to come back on the uh, the questions there. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Morgan, first of all, with regards to Before you to do, three... can I ask if there's any more questions for uh, Mr. Woolard, for Bob? Okay, we're now back into questions to the case officer then. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so, yes, Councillor Morgan, with regards to the trees, um, so as part of the, the previous application that came forward to committee in, in June, I appreciate you weren't on uh, committee at that, at that particular time for that application, but trees were, were discussed as part of that debate as well. Um, with regards to, you mentioned a mulberry tree, I, I don't think it's a mulberry, I think it's the white beam tree that you'll, you'll refer to, which is sort of towards the, as you're looking at the site, it's sort of front and left. Um, if you like, close to Five Gorse Road. Um, I think that's the one you're referring to. Unfortunately, that tree doesn't warrant a TPO. Our, the, the councils, our borough cultural officer, did look at the site as part of the previous application and again as part of this application. And they, they very much want the retention of the two large sycamores, which are being retained at the front. But they were happy with the, the loss of the existing trees on the site, which included that white beam. Just on trees as well, I'd point out that um, at the previous uh, consideration of the previous application, Councillor Bisnow Singh um, took to heart the, the, the purple leaf tree, uh, which is sort of located on the, the sort of front to the right hand side, so the opposite side of the site to the, the white beam tree, um, which I think Councillor Bisnow Singh at the time said it was a copper beech, it's a, a field maple tree. And again, whilst that's being lost again as part of this application, the planting plan that the applicant has provided does include the 
uh, provision of three new purple leaf field maple trees to the front of the site uh, so as a nicely along course road across the frontage um, as compensation for the loss of that one tree. Um, so there is more than uh, sufficient um, provision of new trees and, and planting on the site to, um, uh, to compensate for the loss of the existing trees. And then just on the point in terms of the, the hospital provision, is it's not something we can take into account, I'm afraid. In terms of sustainability, the site is located well within Grantham. Um, you know, it, it's easy access to a range of services and, and, and uh, facilities within Grantham itself. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Jackie, Jackie Smith, I think I sort of stopped you when you were speaking. Did you want to come back? Uh, no, not at the moment, Bob. I might do later. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. David, are you with us? Uh, you were muted, Mr. Chairman, so I didn't hear oh, you speak. I beg your pardon. Over to you then, David. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the presentation, <laughs> Chris. Chris, on the previous application, uh, you had a comparison between what was the first uh, plan and then one that you'd worked with the applicant to, to improve it. Um, and one thing about the other application was the sort of varying heights across the frontage. But this one seems to be more like the original uh, plan of the previous one. Uh, could you just comment on that, please? Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Bellamy. Um, yes, with the, the previous application, that went through, I think, four iterations off the top of my head. I think some were before I, I started the authority, some afterwards. Um, so that went through a few iterations to effectively get that one right. Um, I appreciate that that one did have more variation in the height, but then also it was a much bigger building, well not much bigger building, but a bigger building in terms of footprint with its U shape. Um, so it's set quite forward on Gorse Road, although a suitable distance to the dwellings opposite, with a U shape to it, uh, with two sort of wings going to the back towards Ermine Street. But that was amended to be that way after initially it was both higher, but it was also a lot closer to the dwellings on Ermine close at the back, and it was considered to be overbearing on those dwellings at the back, which is why that one was amended. With this one, um, the applicant for this one's had the benefit of watching that previous application go through all those iterations and watching it go through committee. Um, it has been to the design pad meeting as well. And this one, it has been amended slightly um, through the application process, but that's more in terms of the design details, the boundary treatments and the landscaping, rather than any sort of fundamental changes to it. This one was submitted with um, the building sort of central within the site, set a bit further back from Gorse Road. So those residents haven't objected like they did to the previous application. And equally, we haven't received any, uh, any objections from neighbours to the site or, or to the rear with this one. OK, David. Yep, thank you very much. Thank you. Chris, just on a follow up to that, uh, you say it went to the design pad and it refers to that in the report. Did David, David Singleton, was he able to comment on the landscaping for this one? Yes, Chairman. Um, so again, that was that was something. So your note in uh, the, the approved plans condition, I think it's condition two in the report, it refers to there's a there was an additional planting plan that was amended. So I think that was only provided in September, for instance. So that was post the design pad meeting. Um, so that sort of that was sort of some amendments that came from that. And then there was some minor design features to the um, sort of front left of the, the site, if you like, if you're looking from Gorse Road, that Richard Shaw had, uh, had asked for as well. Uh, so, yes, there has been some amendments. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. There's no other members wishing to ask questions. Oh, Penny, you've come in late again. Yep. Yes, it's, late. it's one of those days, I think, isn't it? Um, I know you say that um, they've learnt lessons from the previous design changes, but I do feel this one does look rather institutional. Um, and I just wonder what the design pad or architects have had to say in any critique of it. Um, I do realise it is set slightly further back, but it's um, sort of all pretty much one material, isn't it, and quite a dominant roof. Is it? I, I assume they, they think it's acceptable. But um, it, You want to comment, Chris? Yeah, um, thank you, uh, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Mills. Um, well, materials are to be conditioned. Materials haven't been completely set in stone. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, so materials are, are still to come forward as part of a condition. But the the proposal, it's um, the sort of the one central section of quite a lot of glazing, which helps break it up. 
um, and then it's predominantly red brick with uh, the two end bits as, as white render. Um, the, I appreciate what you're saying about the, the roof, but like I said, the, the roof tile hasn't been a, sort of approved. That's still to come forward as part of a condition. The, the plans um, as part of the report don't bring it out as well as we, we probably could have done. Um, but the changes included um, there's some sort of uh, better brickwork detail to the the gable that fronts Gorse Road at the closest point, so towards number five Gorse Road. There's there's been a sort of few extra brick details added there um, and around the windows there that came out of the design pad meeting. Um, to, that was the, the comments from Richard Shaw. Uh, so now it does meet those. Thank you, Chris. There's no other no other member wishing to ask any questions. Uh, we, as uh, Chris has said, we did approve one, a similar scheme uh, a little while ago. Do, do you wish to have a debate on this one? Or can we move straight to a vote? Sure. Councillor Morgan has indicated her wish to uh, move the recommendation. Is there a seconder for that, please? I'll second it, Bob. Thank you, Jackie. Are you ready to move to a vote? OK, thank you. Shelley? Thank you, Chairman. Mm -hmm. Councillor <laughs> Bellamy. Four. Councillor Harish Bisnar Singh. Four. Councillor Helen Crawford. Four. Councillor Dilks. Councillor Dilks. Oh, I'm very sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, four. Thank you. Councillor Mike Exton. Four. So Mrs. Rosemary Cabry Brown. Councillor Cabry Brown. Thank you. Councillor Penny Milnes? Four. Councillor Morgan? Four. Councillor Robert Reid? Four. Councillor Ian Selby? Four. Councillor Jackie Smith? Four. Councillor Mrs Judy Smith? Four. Chairman Councillor Bob Adams? Four. Thank you. That appears to be unanimous, Chairman. Thank you very much, Shelley. We now move on to agenda item 8, S20875. Uh, could I first of all ask if uh, Mr Harrison is still with us, please? Yes, still here, Chair, waiting patiently. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much. I appreciate the, uh, the waiting patiently. Um, Chris, this one is in, in your hands again, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I've just loaded up the, the presentation again. And again, I'd be grateful if someone could let me know when it's available to view. Yes, it's on my screen, Chris. Hopefully it's on everybody else's. Excellent. Thank you. In that case, I'll, uh, I'll continue. Um, so thank you, committee. This application is for the erection of two replacement poultry buildings, associated fee bins and control room. And the site is at Leatherbottle Farm, Stranglethorpe Lane, Bullbeck. The key issues raised include the impact on the character and appearance of the area and impact on neighbouring residential amenity. The site is located in open countryside. It's located to the south of Stranglethorpe and to the west of Fullbeck, uh, as seen on the slide there. It is quite a high level. Um, overview. Um, if you can make it out, fullback is, if you can see my mouse, fullback is over here, Brandon down here, Kaythorpe uh, towards the bottom of the slide there. Moving to a, a closer aerial view, um, this shows the existing buildings uh, which are located the two larger or two longer buildings rather, located to the rear or to the west of the site. And this slide also shows the previous nine poultry buildings that have since been demolished under a previous permission, um, which, which was phase one of the, the works on site. Uh, this application is for the replacement of the two rear buildings only. So moving on to the red line application site. Um, so again, this highlights in green the two buildings uh, that form this part of the application. The, uh, it also shows three replacement buildings uh, that are now under construction on the site. They replace the, the nine that was seen in the previous overhead view. For photos of the site, this is looking into the site from, from Strugglethorpe Lane. This view has since slightly changed uh, since these photos were taken. These photos were taken um, when phase one works to demolish those buildings had commenced. So all the, the previous nine sheds in front of the larger two 
had, had now been demolished at this point, and the three new replacement buildings are now under construction on the site. So again, this is just sort of a, a closer picture showing the phase one works commenced, and you can see in the background there, uh, the front of the two buildings that are be to, to be demolished and replaced as part of this application. Again, now this is the, the side on view, this is the northern side of the, the buildings to be demolished. That's an internal view of one of the buildings on the site. This is now looking back, so this is now looking back east across the front of the, the two buildings to be demolished and replaced. And then that's the view uh, of open countryside to the north of the site. So this is the existing site plan. So this follows uh, the approved scheme in August 2018, which was for the demolition of the nine previous buildings and replacement with three modern buildings, as you can see in the slide there. These are the existing elevations of the two buildings to be demolished. Uh, both buildings are identical. The proposed plan as shown now with the, the proposed buildings in green. Just to add a, a very similar scale, so if I jump back uh, to there, you can see the existing buildings and now the proposed buildings and the very similar in scale to the existing buildings on the site to be demolished. These are now the proposed uh, elevations. Um, again, there's very little difference to the existing buildings. They will be slightly higher than the existing buildings with a gain of approximately 1.2 metres in height to the ridge. Um, but then the feed bins are all located to the northern end and in between the two buildings, rather than at present, they're, they're sort of, uh, allocated to both ends of the existing buildings. In terms of evaluation of this application, the proposals for the replacement of two existing 45-year-old buildings with modern replacement buildings, with no intensification of the existing use on site proposed. The application has been accompanied by an environmental statement that includes details of the reduced impact of noise, odour and ammonia of the new buildings compared to the existing buildings on site. There are no objections received from statutory consultees. The proposal is considered to be an enhancement with a modern replacement to the existing buildings and the existing site set up. And then further to the conditions listed in the report, a further landscaping condition is proposed. Um, I'm happy to read this out in full, Chairman, but effectively it's a, a standard soft landscaping condition. So prior to any construction work above ground level is commenced, the details of any soft landscaping work should be submitted to and approved in writing by the local planning authority. I'm happy to provide that in, in writing after the committee as well. Um, the application is considered to, to result in significant improvement in air quality on the site, and the application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, Ian Pick is the uh, applicant's agent uh, down, but he has had to go elsewhere on business. So, Mr. Harrison, if you'd like to come in, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, good afternoon, members, and thank you all for the opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Sam Harrison. I speak behalf. I speak today on behalf of my colleague. Ian Pick, who has unfortunately been called into a meeting at short notice. Ian sends his apologies and has, and has asked me to read the following statement. This planning application seeks consent for two replacement poultry sheds. <clears throat> the proposal does not involve any expansion of the site or an increase in numbers of birds housed. It is purely a proposal to improve and upgrade the farm. Leverbottle Farm is an established poultry farm producing chickens for supermarket retail. The farm was granted planning permission for partial redevelopment in 2017, and that phase has now been completed. This application seeks consent to replace the last two 30-year-old poultry houses with two new modern sheds complying with best available techniques. This project represents significant environmental benefits for improved technology to control environmental emissions such as odour and ammonia. Two sheds, the, the two sheds to be replaced also have a history of flooding due to the low-lying nature of the site. When the current buildings flood, this releases poultry manure into the adjacent watercourses causing pollution. With this planning application, we are proposing to raise the floor level of the site above the modelled flood level to ensure that this, to ensure the site cannot flood in the future. This has been agreed with the Environment Agency and is a further environmental benefit for the scheme. To conclude, the proposal is a simple new for old replacement of poultry sheds, bringing the site up to 21st century production standards. There is no change in the scale of the operation and hence no increase in traffic. All in all, what is proposed in this planning application is far superior to what is on the site now. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Do we have any questions to the applicant's agent, please? Charmaine? 
Thank you. Um, can you advise if there'll be any improvement to the actual quality of life for the chickens inside as a result of your changes? Thank you. Um, yes, in as much as we are currently operating in 30-year-old sheds, we've got less natural light, poor ventilation, um, poor technology all around, feeders, drinkers, uh, all such as that, um, all around animal welfare will be increased. Yes. Thank you, Sam. Any questions? Any further questions to the applicant? Any questions to Chris? Can we move on to debate and uh, Councillor Milnes, Penny? Uh, yes, thank you. As I said earlier, this is in my ward and it is obviously a great improvement to what is there at the moment. Those sheds are very old, they're very damp, they're very smelly and I think Charmaine not so good for the chickens either and this will be a great improvement so in that respect um, that's good i um i did see the site recently and they have started building the three new sheds they, they are quite wide they're quite uh, dominant in the landscape and i'm very grateful that um, we have added um, an additional landscape in condition also to bring us into the 21st century and upgrade the site accordingly it is a very tight site and I think a tree has already disappeared um, that was circled on the plans um, so yes I'm, I'm happy with it in that respect I think the residents are happy that there will be a vast improvement in odor and emissions and uh, with the landscaping scheme in place I think um, that is very acceptable indeed so thank you and I would propose um, approving Thank you very much, Penny. Could I have a seconder, please? I will second it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Harish. Do we wish to continue to debate or can we go straight to a vote? That's good to a vote, Mr. Chairman. I'll second that. Uh, Shelley? <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Councillor David Bellamy? Four. Councillor Harish Bisnassi? Four. Councillor Helen Crawford? Four. Bill Dilks? Four. Councillor Mike Exton. Four. Councillor Mrs. Rosemary Cabry Brown. Four. Councillor Penny Milnes. Four. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Councillor Morgan. Three. Four. Councillor Robert Reed. Four. Councillor Ian Selby. Four. Councillor Justin Smith. Four. Judy Smith. Four. Chairman Councillor Bob Adams. Four. Unanimous Chairman. Thank you very much indeed, Shelley. So we can now move on to uh, agenda item nine, S20, 0271 and 0272. No public speakers on this one at all. Uh, I believe Kat Sutton, are you presenting this one? Or are you, Chris? Kat? I am Chairman. Thank you. Over to you then, Kat. Thank you. Okay, so if you could just let me know when you can see my screen. Yes, I can see the screen. Okay, thank you. Okay, so just to clarify, this presentation is for application S20-0271 and S20272 at Dial Cottage in Belton. The proposal relates to minor alterations to the existing listed dwelling, replacement extension, and an adjoining rear extension. The key issues for the application are considered to be the impact on the host listed building and Belton conservation area. This is an aerial view of the application site. It's located to the north of the village in Belton, with access to the site gains from Main Street. It should be noted that the house hasn't been lived in for a number of years. Now I will show you a number of photos of the site. This first image shows a view of the north elevation. This is the west elevation. This is a photo of the modern extension, which is proposed for demolition within this application. 
This indicates the garden area of the site where the erection of the rear extension will be sited. Yes, Again, this is a further image of the garden. The sixth image shows the hedging that bounds the garden. Following amendments within the course of the application, this hedging is now indicated to remain. The view shows this south elevation. Um, here you can see the modern extension projecting out. This is an image of the southeast elevation. Here is another view of the southeast showing the garden area beyond. And this is the east elevation. And this photo shows the impact of the modern extension projecting out, which is considered to impact the view of the original listed building. The final image shows a view of the site to the north when leaving or entering the village. Here are the existing site plans that show the outline of the site with access from Main Street in the existing extension that is proposed to be demolished. This is the proposed block and site plan. As you can see, the modern extension will be demolished and the new extension will be taking the same footprint with the east elevation set back in line with the existing building. Here you can also see the layout of the proposed rear extension. As you can see, the original listed building is not going to be touched. Here are the proposed elevations. As you can see on the north elevation, um, there is a red dotted line. This shows where the existing extension is compared to the proposed extension. Here is an example of what the proposal would look like. This is the view from the north elevation. As you can see, the original listed building is more clearly visible. This is the existing south elevation compared to the proposed south elevation. This is the proposed external lighting. The external lighting has been reduced from the first proposal, with just minor lighting now proposed. In considering this application, the principle of development is considered acceptable. Proposal considered to comply with policies EN6 and DE1. There is no impact on neighbouring amenities and no harm to the listed building or its setting and no harm to the conservation area. The proposal is considered to enhance the listed building and enhance views of the conservation area. The application is supported by the South Kesteven Conservation Officer and there's no objections to the National Trust subject conditions for material details following the amendments. This application is recommended for approval. Thank you. Back to you, Chairman. Thank you, Kat. There are no public speakers on this one. Does anybody have any questions for the case officer, please? Kat, there yes. are no questions yes, for yes, you. Yes, please, Bob. Oh, sorry, Jackie, go on. Mm -hmm. um, yes, can you tell me uh, what uh, uh, stone you're proposing to uh, use for the, any of the alterations? Right, the, the, the existing one is uh, the local Ancaster stone, and that is what is used in uh, both uh, Mansorf and Belton. Right, the proposed materials would be subject to condition, and um, so they would need to discharge that condition. Then can we make sure that it's uh, Ancaster stone, because we have two houses in uh, um, Mansorf village, which were uh, very recently fitted out with uh, stone from uh, um, further south, and it sticks out like a sore thumb. In can, other can words, we, can we put a condition on to for that uh, Ancaster stone be used, Cat? Can we include that as an additional condition? Um, I believe um, Chris Brown can answer that question. Could you come in, Chris, please? 
yeah, thank you, Kat, and thank you, Chairman. Um, I, th I think my view would be we'd stick with the, the conditions as currently written. Uh, the reason the conditions are there is because the National Trust have asked for those uh, conditions because they want to see all the details. But the applicant has proposed Ancaster Limestone. Um, so that's what the applicant is proposing as part of the proposal, uh, well, which you've suggested, Councillor Smith. Yes, just, that is what it should be. Yeah, so that's what the applicant has suggested. The Effectively, the reason for those conditions is we, the National Trust haven't had time to see all the information of materials that the applicant only provided. I think it was late last week or early this week. So hence, we're, we, we've proposed to carry on with the conditions to be discharged. But, but yes, that's, that is what the applicant proposes, the Ancaster Limestone. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, yeah, Kat. Thank you. Uh, Helen, do you wish to ask a question or to speak in debate? Um, just ask a question. Please. Uh, the application is for a carport, but I haven't seen any design of a carport. I can see where there's going to be a car parked, but we haven't seen a design of a carport. Um, the carport um, was on the first proposal and that has now been removed. Right. Okay, okay. Okay, Helen. Charmaine, question or debate? Question, please. Yeah, uh, carry on. It's following actually the point made by uh, uh, Jackie. Um, 2.3 on page 125 of the um, papers states specifically that Clipsham limestone will be used, which isn't the impression we're now being given. So I think that needs to be amended so to us to avoid any confusion Chris can you clarify that please yeah I can clarify um so yes yeah, so that is that was the proposal as submitted I think initially but like I said it as part of the conditions uh, just bear with me two seconds I'll just go to the conditions so condition three uh, is still effectively um conditions the materials the clips and limestone is not agreed so condition three states that prior to any above ground development, samples of the material and then in brackets, including stone, copings, finished to timber gates, chimney details and pea gravel to be used in the construction of external surfaces shall have been submitted to and approved in writing by us. So we haven't approved any Clipsham limestone at all. It is to be uh, conditioned as part of condition three. And like I said, the information provided by the National Trust, um, which was, uh, yeah, it was only yesterday. Um, so hence the sorry by the applicant, hence the National Trust haven't had a chance to comment. To so say stone for all new elements will be con constructed. With, uh, it mentions Ancaster uh, rubble faced limestone, um, and they provide an example of that. So it would remain with the, the condition three as it currently stands. So, so does that mean the conditions would override two dot three then? Yes. Um, well, yeah. So two was part of the initial proposal, and that's why it's still included there. But effectively, Clipton limestone, it, it doesn't form part of the conditions. Um, like I said, condition three effectively means they still have to submit those materials details to us to be approved at a later date. Is it possible to amend? I'm just uncomfortable with contradicting. Um, bearing in mind, this was what the paper would be that would go through if we approve. Um, is there any way we can just work, amend that wording? I don't think it's just... necessary, Charmaine. Um, yeah, no, it is the... necessary. Um, it's so... just... Sorry, Jay, I apologise. Sorry, Will, carry on. If you're saying it isn't, then I will accept that. I'm just a bit twitchy, having yeah. been involved in the past with subsequent queries, especially around enforcement. And then it's amazing how things like this can throw one, throw a spider yeah. in the works. So. Can, can I just... Can I, I'm happy we with are Chris managing it. Uh, I can assure you that people in Ramsorp and Belton are very, very carefully monitoring it. Uh, can, can I... Can I, can I hang on, sure. Will. Can I ask if people want to speak, please? I go to the chat box. Otherwise, we won't be able to manage the meeting effectively. Will? Uh, can I just assure members that uh, Chris's explanation is absolutely uh, spot on. Um, the uh, description uh, may refer to by uh, Councillor Morgan refers to the proposal um, and what is vital is the decision notice which will have the conditions on it. And so this will present no problems whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you, Will. I'm happy with that reassurance. Or, sorry, that assurance. There are no further questions in the chat box. Uh, can we move on to debate? Do you wish to have a debate on this, or can we move straight to a recommendation? Um, I've asked to speak, please, Bob. 
Sorry, Penny. Uh, yeah, okay, sorry, that was speaking debate, Penny. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, uh, yes, I know this cottage very well. I drive past it very often, and it has looked sad for a long time uh, and in need of attention with these unsympathetic old extensions. And I think it'd be a vast improvement in Ancaster Stone, and it will enable the conservation and the modern usage of what is actually a very small sort of lodge cottage. So I'm prepared to propose that we um, approve this. Thank you, Penny. Do we have a seconder, please? I'll second it. <laughs> okay, Jackie, we'll take Jackie. Thank you, Jackie Smith. Uh, second it. Uh, do we want any further debate or can we go straight on to a vote, please? Straight to vote. I'll second that. Shelley? Thank you, Chairman. Four. Fresh Biz Nassing. Four. Helen Crawford. Abstain. Councillor Phil Dilks. Four. Councillor Mike Exton. Four. Councillor Mrs Rosemary Cabry Brown. Four. Councillor Penny Milnes. Four. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Four. Councillor Robert Reed. Four. Councillor Ian Selby. Four. Councillor Jackie Smith. Four. Councillor Mrs Judy Smith. Four. And Chairman Councillor Bob Adams. Four. That sounds like it was unanimous again, Shelley. Yes, just the one. Oh, no, one abstention, I beg your pardon. Yes, with the one abstention, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Go on to agenda item 10, application S201195. Again, there are no speakers to this one. So, Peter, Peter Mr. Lifted up. Chairman, I'm, I'm ever so sorry. Can I just rewind you on the last one? Because actually there were two applications you were dealing with. Can we check that everyone's satisfy or satisfied with both of them? I do beg your pardon. Yes, there was one for a listed building consent, wasn't it? So let's take the first voters on 0271 uh, and we'll do the 0272, which is the listed building consent, and we'll have a quick vote on that, please, Shelley. Do you need... Thank you, Chairman. Councillor David Bellamy. Councillor Bellamy. David, are you there? Hello. Shall I carry on, Chairman? Yes, please. Hi. Thank you. Councillor Harish Biznassing. Four. Councillor Helen Crawford. Abstain. Councillor Phil Dilks. Four. Councillor Mike Exton. Four. Councillor Mrs Rosemary Cabry Brown. Four. Councillor Penny Milnes. Four. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Four. Councillor Robert Reed. Four. Councillor Ian Selby. Four. Councillor Jackie Smith. Four. Councillor Mrs Judy Smith. Four. Chairman Councillor Bob Adams. Four. And that's again carried with one abstention. I can now safely move on to item 10, S201195. No registered speakers. Peter Lifford, please. Can we check while Peter's loading up his presentation whether we have got Councillor Bellamy? Yes, I'm here. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, so I'm just um, starting to share my screen, so if you can just let me know when it's up there and ready.
Okay, I can, I can see it. Uh, hopefully everybody else can. Yeah, no problem. Yes, no. Okay, thank you. But, uh, application S21195, this is a, a full application for the erection of a detached portal frame industrial unit for Witham specialist vehicles uh, in Colstoworth. The key issues raised on this application are the impact on the surroundings and uh, on and highways. As a um, general overview of the site, um, say the the site is in Colsterworth. It's the square uh, sort of mid of that screen. Off to the left hand side of that screen, you've got the A1 main A1. And to the bottom of the, the photo, you've got um, Honeypot Lane with the entrance marked by the, the red arrow. There's a uh, upscale, larger version of the application site. You've got the access in and the, the proposed building is the, the grey shaded uh, structure. The building is to uh, look like that. Uh, nice appearance there. Got some photos here. Um, so that's the, the new entrance into the site or the, the existing entrance that they're going to be using into the site. If you look off to the, to the left hand side, that building there is for a company that's uh, called Openfield, which is a grain marketing and arable inputs cooperative. Um, that building, so you keep that building in mind. There we have uh, uh, views from the entrance um, off the, the view on the, the right hand side of that screen is the view entrance or oh, access uh, down to the A1. So here are some internal um, shots of the site that's looking down through the site uh, down the access drive. These are internal views that's um, where the rough location of where the uh, the new building is going to go. Now I mentioned the um, open field building um, pre on the previous slide. That is the grey building uh, to the right hand side of that photo. The proposed building is of a similar size um, to that open field uh, building. So the application uh, is recommended for approval. Um, it, it's an expansion of existing business supported by policies E4 and E5. Uh, no, no impact on the adjacent highway network. There's no impact on the adjacent businesses. Sim there's similar sized buildings on adjacent sites. And so the recommendation is uh, one for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Peter. As I said, no speakers on this one. Anybody got any questions for the case officer, please? I can't see any. Does anybody want to debate on this or can we go straight to the vote? I'm sorry, Bob. I tried to type and for some reason it wouldn't let me. I've got just one quick question. Thank you. Um, is there an opportunity to put any landscaping in around this building? It does concern me that we're slapping up these sites and it is a great opportunity for wildlife um, rather than having a virtual desert, which that looks like in the middle of our countryside. I can probably help Peter here because this is right in my my uh, district and uh, county division, Charlemagne. It's a very, very heavily industrial area. Uh, Southerington's a uh, do reclaimed uh, XWD vehicles. There's a lot of traffic. And uh, I honestly don't, I mean, Peter might contradict me, but I honestly can't see that uh, there'd be any real benefit to any form of landscaping. There is a lot of trees in the area. There's a lot of farmland around it. Okay, I, thanks. I would also add, I think, that the, the previous use of the site was for open storage of crane parts. Um, and so it, there hasn't been any <laughs> wildlife, not wildlife, I mean, wildlife, there probably is, but actual trees, growth, etc., on the site for some considerable years. And I think personally, I think putting any on there, it would probably look out of place. I appreciate where you're coming from, but I think, I think it would just if any, it would stick out like a sore thumb putting trees in there. Okay, thank you. 
Sorry, Councillor Bellamy. I hope speaking debate, Bob, please. Yeah, well, I think we're there now. There's no further questions, David, so over to you. Yeah, I'm quite happy to propose this. It's on an existing site. Uh, the next door neighbour, like the Grain people, have been there since the 60s. Um, it's on like the almost like the perimeter of what was the old North with the Mayor field site. That's right. Like I say, it's an industrial complex. It's been there for a long time. And uh, this new building will have no impact on the surrounding area whatsoever. So I'm quite happy uh, to propose it. Thank you, David. I was going to second it, but Count Councillor Harish Biznail Singh has uh, come in and seconded it. So I'll take that as a, a proposer and seconder. Do we want any further debate or can we go straight to the uh, vote, please? Straight vote to the vote then, Mr. sorry. Vote, please, to... Mr. Chairman. Straight to the vote? Yes, please, Mr. Chairman. Fine. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor David Bellamy? Four. Councillor Harish Bisnell Singh? Four. Councillor Helen Crawford? Four. Councillor Phil Dilks? Four. Councillor Mike Exton? Four. Councillor Mrs. Rosemary Cabry Brown? Councillor Cabry Brown? Rosemary, are you hearing us? Move on, Shelley, and come back. Thank you. Councillor Penny Milnes. Four. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Four. Councillor Robert Reid. Four. Councillor Ian Selby. Four. Councillor Jackie Smith. Four. Councillor Mrs Judy Smith. Councillor Judy Smith? Four. Thank you. And Chairman Councillor Bob Adams? Four. Do we have Councillor Cabry Brown? Okay. Uh, I think we can move on, Shelley. That was pretty unanimous with one. Do we call that an ab abstention or non vote? We'll call that a non vote, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Carried, carried, uh, carried with uh, one not voting. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. So we now move on to agenda item 11, uh, S20 0311. There are two uh, speakers here, uh, Councillor Virginia Moore Moran and Councillor Ashley Baxter. Are you both there, please? Yes, I am. Ashley? Mr Chairman, we did receive an email earlier on today from Councillor Baxter um, and he said he hoped he'd be able to join us. I have unmuted his microphone, but it looks like he's just dropped out. So if he's not available, we'll read his script in his absence. Thank you. Will you, here, read, will you read his script? Thank yeah. you. OK, so again, we have uh, Mr Lifford, Peter, please. And you have got your uh, uh, presentation on the screen already. Do we need Excellent. to try and make contact with Councillor Cabry Brown, or are you comfortable to carry on? I'm, I'm comfortable to carry on, to be honest. She'll come back if she's able to. Thank you. Peter? Okay, yes, uh, thank you, Chairman, and thanks for confirming that the uh, presentation is up there. This is application S20103 slash 0311. Uh, it's proposed the erection of a war memorial in the main square at Market Deeping. Um, the key issues be the impact on the conservation area and listed buildings. The site is located uh, in the middle of the. Uh, Sorry, scene. Peter. Could members who are not speaking please turn the microphones off? We're getting a lot of background noise. Thank you. Okay. The, the, um, so there's a plan on up on the screen of uh, the location of the proposed memorial. It is to the plan uh, drawing there to show uh, what the, it is to look like. It's proposed at 1.87 metres high in the shape of a uh, Celtic, Celtic cross. And it's the proposal as submitted is to finish it in grey granite. Um, we've got some pictures there uh, that's showing the 
the site with the listed buildings to the rear. This is a photo submitted by the by the applicants showing so that wooden um, structure there uh, is the proposed height of the the cross. There with a uh, sorry with a uh, another view there with so the listed buildings in the background. Um, the since uh, preparing the report, um, the uh, applicant has submitted further information and has confirmed that the memorial is to be inscribed uh, with wording coming from the Deeping School English Department. So despite what it says in the actual committee report, they are, it is proposed to be inscribed. Uh, we don't exactly know what the wording is. Um, also from uh, comments that the applicant has seen, he wanted to draw attention to the two existing memorials that are uh, in the Deepings. So you've got the existing memorials, so one on the left is in the Remembrance Garden, and the other one is a plaque in uh, St Guthlick's Church. So in the evaluation is from the officers is say, due to the size and location of the memorial, consider it is appropriate to its surroundings and there'll be no detrimental impact on the character of the conservation or setting of uh, the adjacent listed buildings. So we have imposed a attached a condition um, about the material, the, the finished material of the memorial. I think we'd be looking for something similar to uh, the surrounding uh, listed buildings. And so the uh, recommendation is one for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Councillor Virginia Moran. Hi. Um, yes, thank you. I'm sorry that the notes that I submitted to um, to the planning um, committee were just my sort of working notes, um, but that I understood it was a just in case I got cut off or something. So. Um, Right, I've quite a bit to say. I'll speak fairly fast and try and get it in in the three minutes. So you've got three minutes, yes. Yes, right. Um, at the end of the First World War, uh, a very wide and lengthy consultation took place over many months with the immediate and extended families of casualties and the residents of the Deepings as to whether they wanted a stone memorial in the centre of the town or a memorial in the church. They asked for a, rem a memorial in the church and these were erected in both Market Deeping and Deeping St. James churches. Uh, this memorial forms the destination for the Remembrance Parade, where reeds are laid and, lists, and it lists the names of all casualties. In addition, there are two memorials in Boundary Park, one of which was pictured, another one wasn't. Uh, Boundary Park is a small park alongside the river at the boundary of Market Deeping and Deeping St. James. There's also a particularly attractive memorial bench. This is the venue for the memorial gardens, wreath laying and services of remembrance, which take place over two weeks surrounding Remembrance Day. The Rotary has had no consultation either with the public, the church, any surviving relatives or the British Legion, who I understand their entire ethos is remembrance and support of the armed services. There is mention in the application that when the remembrance prayer takes place, that people feel they are saluting a car park. This is the first that anyone has heard this observation. Remembrance parades have been taking place for over 30 years, using the flagpole of the town hall as the focus of the salute. There is a road closure in place, and if attendees feel that this is the case, then the cars belonging to the participants can be parked elsewhere. The chairman of the British, Royal British Legion has never heard of this concern, and the British Legion, had they been properly consulted, would not have been in favour of this memorial, due to its small size and position. The proposed memorial is far too small and would be almost impossible to see during the salute, whereas the flag is raised on the first floor of the town hall. The current Remembrance Parade works well, with the salute being taken in the square to the flag and then proceeds to the church. Hundreds of residents attend to watch the parade and Church Street is usually lined with people, many of whom follow the parade into the church for the wreath laying and the service. The memorial would be unsuitable for the laying of wreaths due to it being so small and the fact that the area is something of a wind tunnel, as anyone who's attended the Saturday markets in the past will testify. 
The small wooden crosses which families put into the ground in the Remembrance Gardens would unable to be placed there. There is insufficient space to allow for the proposed monument to be used for public gatherings. The area is busy and there would be no space for a public gathering or any quiet contemplation. The monument will be insignificant in the area. The protected phone box that it would be next to is nine foot tall and the proposed monument is barely six foot tall. At the proposed site there is currently a large raised flower bed with seating which is in constant use for either a short rest, eating lunch from the chippy opposite or having a smoke. I note that the original application that Rotary has spoken to a local and district councillor who advised them that he would move the flower bed. The counts that councillor did not seek permission of the town council nor had he any authority from the town or county councils who are on the land to offer this. Could you As come to a conclusion please Virginia? The three minutes. Is... There, two paragraphs. As Kenneth Gasser commented they have identified that there is apparatus in the vicinity which may be affected by the activities specified. There also appears to be access manholes for water in the area where the flower bed would have to be moved to and we cannot block these off. The site is in the centre of a conservation area and the majority of the properties in Malkeep Square are Grade 2 listed and built in limestone. The proposed memorial is grey granite, although I note the change. I concur with the conservation officer's comment that there is already an abundance of street furniture in this area and uh, we don't need any more. Whilst the town council initially agreed to support the proposal... Virginia, uh, I must stop you unless you're coming to a conclusion straight I am. away. I am. Um, I'll skip the bit about the town council. Um, basically, to sum up, this memorial is unnecessary, it's not in the right place, and I actually feel that the small size, the design and the wording is a bit of an insult rather than a tribute. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you for your forbearance on there. Uh, 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 we now move to, there's no uh, body here on behalf of the applicant. So we move Councillor to... Baxter, Mr Chairman. Oh, is he here? I'm hoping he should be able to yes, hear I'm us. Here. Wonderful. Thank you, uh, Ashley. Would you like to uh, do your presentation, please? Yeah, yeah, sorry I wasn't here earlier on. Is, um, no, it's fine, are, my no slides, are my slides available? Can you see that on your screen? I can. Uh, I I can't, but that doesn't mean that... that Ta you can. Time Cop Memorial. I can. Uh, can members of the committee see the slides? So yes. Yeah, yeah, I've got it. Okay, right. Um, right, three, three minutes. Um, Starting uh, now. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm Ashley Baxter, one of the district councillors representing the market in West Deeping Ward. Um, my own great uncle on my mother's side died in the First War and is commemorated on the Tynecott Memorial. There's a picture of my children at the memorial. Um, my great uncle on my father's side died in a, in a Lancaster and never came back. Mm -hmm. and his name is on a memorial in Spalding. I, I understand remembrance. Since moving to the Deepings in 2006, I've always been impressed at how well the Deepings does remembrance. There are at least five acts of remembrance each November involving parades, church services, and the opening and closing of the Garden of Gardens of Remembrance. Like most people in the Deepings, I think remembering the sacrifices made during the World Wars is an important duty, and I have total respect for the applicant, uh, Mr. Tom Johnson, in the sincerity of his wish to honour the fallen. Nobody argues that we should rem be remembering the fallen. However, this application is unnecessary and inappropriate. It is unnecessary because the Deepings already has at least four war memorials. The most recent, put up at the boundary of Market Deeping and Deeping St. James, opposite the library, where there's an annual fortnight of remembrance uh, garden each year, was an initiative of the two parishes, Deeping St. James Market Deeping, and of Phil Dilks and the late Reg Howard in particular. Some of you will remember that Councillor Howard was a fierce independent, but also a genuine veteran of the Second World War, and a bench has been placed opposite the library in memory of Reg Howard and all those who participated in World War II. The proposed monument is inappropriate for the following reasons. As memorials go, it is very short. It's only four centimetres higher than I am, uh, and not nearly as tall as a red telephone box, as uh, Virginia has already alluded to. It is non-specific. Um, without the lettering, so this is no longer relevant because the lettering is in, in the post, as it were, 
Um, I, I think if we're going to have a community memorial, we should know what it says and, and know what it is before we, we grant permission for it. Um, slide four, um, it is out of keeping. There is already an abundance of street furniture in this area and a six foot memorial will frankly be lost in the melee. In any case, the particular design is out of keeping with the rest of the marketplace. Uh, the granite design the last time I, I looked at it. It will, it will displace an immediate an existing amenity, namely the bench and the floral arrangement, which is used by residents and visitors and is a feature of the town, especially during um, uh, the, grow the hanging basket season. But most of all, my biggest problem with this application is that it shows no evidence of either need or desire from local people for this particular war memorial. There has been no public consultation by the applicants, not even on social media. There is no message of support from the Langtoft and Deeping branch of the British Legion, who are the who are the custodians of remembrance. And uh, thank you. The uh, the elected town council is unconvinced that this memorial is appropriate. I'm not on the town council, but the town council, in its wisdom, is unconvinced that this is the right thing in the right place. There has been no public outcry for a memorial. No no subscriptions. No petition. And let's face it, there are very few people old enough to have direct memories of those who died in the World Wars. And those that did make, those that did, made decisions at the time to build memorials in the parish churches. We will remember them. We do remember them. But with the greatest of respect, this proposal does not help Deepings remember. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Thank you, Ashley. Uh... We now move on to uh, the applicants aren't here, so it's questions to the case officer, please. Any questions to the case officer? The Dilks to start. Right, yes, to Andrew Hodgson. Oh, hang on, I'm looking way, way from, just bear with me, Phil. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, you've, you've got Councillor Dilks, then Councillor Milnes. Yep, so, uh, right, Councillor Dilks, questions to the case officer, please. Yeah, I've got a, a uh, ah, to the case officer. OK, um, um, to Mr. Lifford, um, you mentioned that there'll be no detriment to the area, I think you said in your uh, presentation, Peter. Um, but the historic buildings advisor, as, as um, uh, the deputy mayor mentioned, the historic buildings advisor um, does say um, in his comments, while I would not wish to oppose the erection of a memorial, etc., in the town centre to commemorate local citizens um, who have given their lives, I am concerned about the appropriateness of the proposed location and concur with the town council comments on material. There is already an abundance of street furniture in this area that detracts from the conservation area and the settings of several nearby listed buildings. I suggest he's talking about the town hall in particular. But I just wondered if you'd um, comment on that, Peter. Right, the, so, yeah, say so the, the material. The area. Yeah, so the materials are covered by the condition. And so we, uh, yeah, we, we, we note the comments from the conservation officer. Um, so we as officers, uh, colleagues, took um, a different view in, say, with the the um, street furniture that's already there, we didn't feel that this, in our opinion, would detract from the area. Okay, thank you, Peter. Uh, Penny Milnes, please. Um, yes, thank you. I also wanted to pick up on what the um, conservation officer said about clutter in that area. Um, the existing seat and planter, they say, will be put somewhere else. Well, where else? And um, would that need permission? Um, for a start, um, because obviously, if that's just going to be moved, then this is an addition, isn't it? It's not just being re put in replacing the planter and seating. Um, and you would be losing the seating. Um, also, should we not be judging it as it's presented? I don't know. Can you have Celtic cross in stone? Is, is, is this something that the design would change if we change the materials? 
Um, and when we talk about um, this clutter and detriment to the area, if it's not something that's really wanted by the residents or by anybody in particular, why do we need, therefore, to um, remove a planter and a seater, put that somewhere else, and add this? Any comments, Peter? Right. So, uh, in putting up things like flower beds, seating, etc., if they're put up by parish slash town councils, they have certain permitted development rights to put such items um, almost where they want. Um, I note your comments about um, its location, need, etc. So we've just looked at the application as submitted. There were, when the application was submitted, there were, you know, in the submission, it said they had had discussions with the parish council. Um, it now transpires that maybe that councillor didn't have any authority to um, give that view. He wasn't talking on behalf of the whole of the town council. Um, so the application had been called into committee. It's we've presented it to you it's really up for your um your discussion and debate and decision we, we as officers we've made a recommendation it's now down to you as councillors to uh, you know either agree or <laughs> disagree with that with the officer's recommendation thank you peter uh, there's no other member wanting to ask a question but uh i will uh, sorry uh so in speaking debate so will will richards you want to come in and say, a, a say mr word? chairman mr chairman at some point, I'm, I'm, don't wish to um, jump in ahead of uh, Will, but um, um, I, I did indicate to uh, ask the deputy mayor a question. Oh, sorry, we don't. We, is the deputy mayor Virginia Moore? On? Virginia, yeah. Yeah. Well, you'll have to tell me what the question is, and then. Uh, oh, I see. Sorry, of course. Sorry, according to the constitution, Phil. Um, the deputy mayor, I Virginia, mentioned that the chairman of the mentioned the chairman of the local British Legion. Uh, that's me, folks. Um, I have declared that interest at the start of the meeting. Um, but my question relates um, to uh, as, uh, what Penny's raised about the um, removal. If this application is approved, it would require the removal of the town council's attractive raised planter and round seating structure on the square, which is very attractive. Can I ask, and I was going to ask the case officer or uh, the deputy mayor uh, whether they would be required to remove the seat, but particularly can I ask the deputy mayor if the town council would be prepared to remove the seat to make way for this Celtic cross? Right. Can you, Virginia, can you give a yes or no answer to that, please? Uh I can, and no, it would be with very, very, very great reluctance that we would move them, and we would certainly not consider getting rid of them. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. Peter, do you want to make any comment? Peter Lifford, no. I can see uh, your, I can see your plate of cakes, but I can't <laughs> see you. No, sorry. As, as the, I must admit, when the application was first submitted and we did get the comments, it was suggested to the applicant maybe they might like to discuss further with um, the town council, um, you know, have discussions with them. Um, but um, say, you know, it was say the application has been called into committee. This is what you have. Thank you, Peter. Will, submitted. would you like to come in now, please? Can I come in? Yes, Sorry. I've called Will in Rosemary. I'll come back to you. I know, but it's not typing my thingy. Uh, thank Rosemary, you, Chairman. Rosemary, I see where you want to speak, but I'm asking Will to come in because he, he wanted to say a few words a bit earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I, th I think it's important to refer to 5.3 of the officer's report um, because there um, we explain the view of the historic buildings advisor. I, I presume um, that would be our principal conservation officer, um, Tricia Craggs, uh, who's an experienced conservation uh, planner. Um, essentially, she, she 
does, doesn't object to it, in, in, in fact, because uh, paragraph 5, 3.5 um, makes that clear. Um, whilst I do not wish to object to the erection of a memorial in the town, but she does have uh, some re reservations. Um, but but um, I, I think, um, on balance, I think uh, she, she, she basically uh, states that um, in, in itself, it's, uh, it's not um, likely to affect the uh, list, the conservation area or the listed building. However, she does say usually these type of applications should be accompanied by a heritage impact assessment, which assesses um, in more detail the impact it has on its surroundings. Um, so all I would say is that uh, comments and objections such as those mentioned by, uh, for example, uh, Councillor Moran and Councillor Baxter, some of them aren't material, things like size, uh, things like need, and uh, you know, and that sort of stuff. But uh, c certainly the recommendation is an unbalanced one, and it, you know, I think it, it, it could go either way, um, in as much as there are reservations there by the conservation officer. Thank you, Phil. Rosemary, you've said, "May I speak?" Do you want to speak in debate, or do you want to ask the case officer a question? Because that is where we're at at the moment. Yes, I'd like to ask a question, please. Yep. Um, may I, well, can I suggest or ask the case officer, what is the reason for stopping the memorial being put in the centre of the flowers? Because then you would have the flowers, the seat, and the memorial in the centre, and it would be a bit taller, and people could, elderly people could sit on the seat, and they would be sitting in front of the memorial. So you would get one item on the pavement moved across to the centre of the flowers. You wouldn't need to lose the flowers, and you would um, you would you would have all the impact in one place. And that's my point of view. Um, I'm sorry if I'm asking the wrong person, whatever, but I would have thought that was common sense because then you can see that the memorial itself is also protected because people won't clamber over the flowers to deface it. I think Peter would respond to that, that we can only consider as a planning committee the application that's before us, Rosemary. Yeah. Oh, well, I suggest we ask the applicant to think of it. Well, uh, OK. Let's, let's, are there any further questions that uh, anybody would wish to put to the case officer? Uh, oh, and if not, if not, oh, we'll move. I've got a question, but it's for debate, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, I did specifically say questions, uh, Mike. Well, if it's a question, is it a question or is it for debate, a point to make in debate? Uh, it's a, just a point. Uh, yeah, it's a point, okay. really, Mike. You know, it's okay, a comment. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let me move back to the chat box, please, Mike. Um, and I so, think... do you want me to go on? No, uh, no. Just let me go. I'm going to take them. Put put it in the chat box, please, Mike, and we'll we'll bring you in in line. Uh, with You'll be a... lucky if you get in the chat box. You're Isn't in you? the chat box, Rosemary. You got there. <laughs> I, no, no. Seriously, a lot of the time earlier on today, I've been going to the chat box and typing okay. it. It's not been accepting it. Okay, well, well, we'll have to have a word with IT and see if there's a problem there for you. Mr Chairman, I did want to, if I may, I'll put it in the chat box, raise, I did have a point of information um, in view of Ms., uh, the Head of Planning's um, comments, if I may, before debate. Uh, well, what you put there, you said, uh, look, go on, you said reply to Will, point of information. Okay, go on. Yeah, um, thank you, thank you, Mr. Brother. Um, I do accept, and I hear what Will is saying, that it could, you know, um, we, we could take those comments either way, but... I think if I might be helpful, I think the historic buildings advisor is, uh, or conservation officer, is being very kind to the applicant and to remembrance, and and is you know not wanting to sort of be seen to be opposing, as she says there, uh, the erection of a memorial, but really does go on to be quite strong and say that she's concerned about the appropriateness of the location, etc., and the material. And then goes on to say there's already an abundance of street furniture in this area that detracts not only from this part of the conservation area, but also 
the setting of nearby listed buildings. I think that is very strong. Um, I appreciate the, the, you know, the it comes with that rider that look, I don't want to, um, 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 you know, um, uh, say anything against remembrance, and none of us would. Um, if I, yeah, can I just comment briefly there? Um, uh, the fact that uh, the conservation officer talks about an abundance of street furniture, uh, which uh, dis detracts from listed buildings, um, it's different from saying that the um, um, the proposal, the statute, detracts uh, from the area. Um, and so I think um, it's by by commenting about the street furniture, um, perhaps uh, something should be done about the street furniture. I'm, I'm not saying it should, but you know, uh, you can't say. I don't think it's a logical sort of conclusion to that argument. In terms of location, yes, she does have uh, reservations, and she does say that ideally. Um, there should be a, a heritage impact assessment because, you know, if it does affect uh, conservation area and listed buildings, that is the usual procedure. Yes, perhaps she she is being kind, given that you know it, it is a a, a mem mem oh can't say it. Yeah. Remembrance. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I, I can get the word out. Yeah, um, a statue and so on. But um, as a point of interest, the, the, the symbol is a Celtic uh, uh, cross, and it's a traditional Christian symbol. Um, symbolic meaning, apparently, is um, it was introduced by St. Patrick when he was converting the heathens. Um, so it's more of a, a religious symbol. And um, if it does have any inscription, then it would be useful to know what that that is, because you've got a, a Christian symbol, the, the Celtic cross, and then we, 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 it's proposed to have some text there, um, where which we don't have any information about. So, it, it, it could be incomplete in in that sense. One could argue, and you you have a, an option, Chairman, to possibly defer, defer this application until such time as there's a proper heritage heritage impact assessment carried out and further information is available about the inscription thank you thank you will i was going to suggest that to uh, members will uh, that we do defer it there's obviously quite a lot of uh, uh, disquiet about it in in many ways uh, and obviously there there is uh, quite a bit of uh, consultation i think that really ought to take place with the various people uh, and on that basis uh, I'm, prepared, I'm prepared to, uh, I don't want to stifle debate, but I'm quite happy to, at the moment to move deferral for the, uh, pro the, uh, the provision of a, um, a, a, imp a heritage impact assessment and uh, to enable uh, the different organisations within Market Deeping to consult with each other. Does that, does that make any sense, Phil? Yes, I'll second. Not, not to me, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I would be um, proposing refusal of this application, yeah. and I'd like to speak in debate and say why. I was going to as well. I haven't had a chance. I did actually ask to speak earlier, but it got shunted along um, my request. Um, I would second Phil's position. Um, I've got a number of reasons, and I, I would like to, to speak on it. Can I, can I say, people keep telling me they put a request to speak. Uh, but I haven't got to others that have also requested a chance to speak. We're trying to come to a fairly quick conclusion, so I'm not ignoring anybody. No, so, I, I think Ian was in front of me, actually. OK. Um, on the debate bit. <laughs> I think I think we need to move forward because we could be going around in circles on this one for a long while. Phil, do you want to put your proposition? Uh, mm. Yes, I would. Thank Mr. You, Mr. Chairman, Chair. um, apologies. We've had a proposition that's been made and seconded, so if we can deal with that one. If, if you want to carry on with debate first, then we can kind of part Councillor Dilks's proposition for when are we determine you talking the, about the defer Are you talking about the deferral? Well, I'm, at this stage, I'm prepared to withdraw that in, uh, in favour of uh, Councillor Dilks. Are you happy with that, Rosemary, for the time being? Yes. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, as colleagues have said, the Legion is the custodian of resemblance, uh, remembrance, and as Chairman, um, I lay wreaths at a dozen Commonwealth War graves in Deepings, Baston and Langtoft on the weekend. And on Friday and Saturday this week and next, I'll be manning the poppy stand at Deepings Tesco. Every poppy counts, you know. Never miss an opportunity. So, can I say, I'm delighted that in the very week 
that the vital poppy appeal hopefully comes to the top of all our agendas, we're talking about what's appropriate in terms of remembrance. You won't be surprised to know I'm in favour of war memorials. They help remind us all of those who fought for the freedom we all enjoy today. But, but they have to be appropriate. They have to be in the right place and the right scale. They have to be have community support. This application has none of those things. I'd hate to do anything that might deflect from remembrance. But after a lot of heart searching and speaking with Legion members, and, and I also, um, I've heard no one who is in favour of this in our community, um, including, I have to say, I, I spoke to the vicar of Market Deeping, um, as Will says, uh, a, um, a Celtic cross is a religious Christian symbol. The vicar of Market Deeping didn't even know anything about the application. So I now realise that speaking out is the right thing to do, and I've come to the conclusion that this application actually deflects from remembrance. It's a dinky three foot high Celtic cross on a plinth, which may be more appropriate in a Welsh village, apologies Will, uh, but maybe not here. There's no names to the fallen. It doesn't even say in the application that it's to remember them. <coughs> and only later are we told that a plaque could be added in the future. It just doesn't seem to be thought through. It would clutter up, as colleagues have said, an already rather cluttered corner uh, of the town square. And apart from the applicant, I haven't heard anyone, as I said, express a word in favour of it. The applicant has suggested those who march past the salute in Dias on Remembrance Day, one day a year, might feel they're saluting an empty car park. There's no evidence to back that up because I can tell you it's total nonsense. And I know because I'm the chairman of the um, uh, British Legion and I've led the British Legion veterans and others on the parade for a, a couple of three years. And I proudly give the order eyes left to those marching with us. I'm actually the only one who salutes. And I can tell you with authority from the bottom of my heart that I've never heard anyone suggest to me that they have a problem thinking that they're saluting an empty car park. The applicant says it would be better if councillors stood by this memorial to take the salute. Well, if they did, it's only three foot high on a, a plinth that's a couple of feet. Um, the marchers wouldn't be able to see the cross. It'd be even worse um, um, than, than what they say at the moment. But you don't have to listen to me. Show some respect to the relatives who gave their lives and didn't want a memorial in the town square. They wanted it in the church. They've got it. Listen to Market Deep in town council. The people we actually salute who don't want a Celtic cross or a so-called memorial cluttering up that small area that already has a phone box, box much higher, a freestanding notice board and a rather attractive planter seat, circular seat. If we get this wrong, and it, I just want to say this, this hasn't been said by anyone. If we get this wrong today, we're not just imposing something that's not even wanted by the town councillors who take the salute, but something that hasn't been mentioned yet is local businesses. And if approved, this cross would be slapped bang in front of at least one local shop. And if it's in the place of the um, um, planter, it'd be um, more... Um, um, in the way, if I could put it that, of the local shop. Why would we want to make it even tougher for a local business trying to make a living at this difficult enough COVID time? That business I know is against the application. For all these reasons, I propose that it is not in keeping and I propose refusal. I'm happy to give reasons. I'm Thank happy, you. Thank I'm you, happy Phil. to second that. Thank you. Thank you, Charmaine. Are there any other speakers on the debate? Yes, I'm, I'm happy to, to speak um, after, if necessary. Do you want my reasons, Mr. Chairman? Um, my, um, may I? I don't. Sorry, if I'm seconding, I would actually like to refer to our local plan policy EN6 because obviously we, we need one, and um, that that's basically all about um, opposing any development that could cause harm. Um, or, or, or significance to a significant heritage asset or its setting. 
Um, I believe that um, what we haven't got in there, but I think which Phil has touched on, is the importance of the memorial. I ought to declare I'm also a member of the British Legion. I served with the Signals for five years. And in fact, um, uh, ironically, my okay. grandfather was actually served with the American Expedition. Okay. Charmaine, I'm going to stop you there because you've seconded it fine. I'll let you come back. But I'm trying to pull this back to uh, where Phil first said Deputy Mayor and uh, also to case officers. And after that came Penny Mills. Penny, do you still want to ask a question, please? Because it was a question to the case officer. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know anymore. Um, I think I was just asking whether we should consider the reasons for refusal at this point, and I think we've actually moved on from when I said yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. I think, Mr Chairman, uh, we were at the point where we were about to enter debate, so Councillor Selby was the next person to yes, speak from the list. Yes, I was just about to call him in, Joe. Thank you. What would I do without you? Yes, uh, Ian. Thank you very much, Joe, and thank you very much indeed, Mr Chairman. Um, I was intending to make a proposal as well, Mr Chairman, but I've waited patiently and I've not been rude and interrupted anybody else. Um, so, uh, yes, I do have a proposal to make. Um, remembrance always top of my agenda every year, Mr Chairman. Um, I had a poppy on for the whole of this meeting, Mr Chairman, as well. Um, so, um, yeah, always top of my thoughts. Um, now, I'm not convinced that there's been proper public consultation on this issue. And as this is such a controversial issue, um, I've therefore got this suggestion um, for you. Um, I'm going to propose a deferral, um, not just for the reasons that, that Will mentioned with, with regard in the heritage impact assessment, but also because I'm not convinced there's been proper public co consultation. Um, now, next year, um, we've got the county council elections coming up. Now, local councillors, local district councillors can, if they wish, uh, they can actually ask at the next full council meeting of, of the district council on the 26th of November, or there's a cabinet meeting next week on the 3rd. They can ask for a local referendum on this subject in Market Deeping. Uh, so while, while uh, residents are attending for county council, um, they, they, I'm sure it's quite simple for them to fill out a simple form at a, at a, for, for a referendum on this issue. Now, a war memorial, it's not only about the fallen, but it's also about democracy. I mean, that's what, uh, one of the things that they fought for. Um, now, so, I say a local referendum, in my view, would be very, very appropriate. Now, we here in Grantham, we've had a, a local statute that's been passed by this planning committee without public consultation, without the people having their say on the matter. And I feel that it's not for me, as a Grantham councillor, to be telling the people of, of Market Deeping what they should and should not have erected in the middle of their town. Um, and I do feel strongly about that. And also it has been mentioned that, uh, that there's the, the wording on this, this memorial, uh, that, that it's not come forward as what it's going to say on it either. I mean, if you want to put some wording on a, on a memorial, uh, then it's, it's about time that uh, remembrance for the animals of war was done. Something, something along those lines, I think, would be would be appropriate. Um, if, if the residents of Market Deeping want such a war memorial, then personally, I'm quite happy to support them for with it. But if they don't want it, then let, let at least let them have their say and let them let's find out whether they do or whether they don't want it. So I'm therefore going to propose. Uh, a deferral on this item, at least to give the local district councillors an opportunity to, to ask the, um, the members of the cabinet, the district council cabinet, if they'll be willing to let them have a referendum on this next year. So that is my proposal, and it'd be nice if I get a second up for that. So uh, before I ask for a second, or in, Joe, you were Thank wanting you, to Mr. come Chairman. in. Um, uh, apologies and. I think this would need to be checked in more detail, but in terms of, of doing a, a local referendum or a parish poll, um, I'm not sure whether that would be something that could be combined with um, any elections, because there are some polls that you can't combine together, um, and potentially actually an appropriate way for that to come forward would be through um, through the um, Market Deeping Town Council. They could request that parish poll, obviously, once the, the COVID restrictions have been lifted permitting such polls. Thank you, Joe. So here, no, will you restrict your... Yeah, your... Chairman, can I just I, give my apologies? No, will you, can we wait? I'm, 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 okay. I'm a, I've got to go, I've got to leave. 
Okay, Jackie. Sorry about that. Okay. You're not down to speak in this one, are you? No. No. Okay. Okay, Jackie. Thanks very much. Take care. Thank you. Sorry, Bobby was going to say. Yeah, if, if we can't have a referendum from what Joe was saying, it's probably not possible in the immediate future. Uh, are you leaving your proposal for deferral? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman, because I just think that uh, okay. even we should ask, the, we should ask the, the town council if they if they want a local poll. Okay. Is there a seconder for that uh, proposal? Don't, don't we have to have a vote on the first? Proposal? Hang on, I can take as many proposals as I like and then deal with them in a vote in order. So, okay. uh, is there a seconder for Ian Selby's proposal? If there isn't, then there's no there's nothing on the. I think, Mr. Chairman, you've muted yourself. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, there's no seconder for the proposal. It's probably a good idea, actually. There's no, no seconder for the proposal. Uh, so that falls in. Um, That's fair enough, then, Mr. Chairman. At least I'll put forward the suggestion. That's fair thank enough. thank you very much indeed. Very much appreciated. I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to go back to the chat box. Um, Harish, have you? Uh, where, I think I need to go back further than that. I think it was Councillor yeah. Morgan next, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, sorry to interrupt, but my name was right at the top, of it. you said just call me in, but now it's gone off the board. Mm. It has gone off the board, hasn't it? Mr. Chairman, it was Councillor Selby, Councillor Morgan, Councillor Dilts, Councillor Exton, and then Councillor Bisnorth Singh. Right, okay. Can you call them out in that order, Joe? Because I think I've lost the plot. <laughs> It'll be Councillor Morgan now. Councillor Morgan, briefly, please, because you've had one effort. Well, you've had one attempt. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, well, I, I'm not, I basically was seconding um, what Councillor Dilts was saying, and I actually would refer to some of the comments made by Councillor Selby um, uh, re regarding this. The reason that I'm uh, proposing or seconding refusal uh, now is that basically by doing so, it would automatically send it back to the drawing board, and I think that's the trouble with this. The location's in question, the design is in question, and the lack of wording raises questions about it. What, what, what exactly um, are we are we really approving? Even the material isn't actually yet um, necessarily agreed. Um, I think there's far too much up in the air, and whether or not it should happen at all, if we listen to our, our local councillors at least, um, is also in question. So my feeling is at this stage we send a clear message, it needs to go back to the drawing board, and if the people of Market Deeping at, in the, at their leisure um, want a memorial, they can collectively, and I'm sure that Councillor Dilts and Ash, Ashbury and the members of the British Legion uh, will come together with all the relevant parties and come forward with an alternative proposal for us to consider at some stage in the future, if that's what they want. Um, and I, I would just say that I support Phil's comment that this isn't just, uh, and Ian's, this isn't just about um, a, a, a cross um, and even a memorial uh, for those gone. It's about um, reflection and the future, and really, as a point of reflection, is is that an ideal ideal location? I actually have some sympathy with Councillor Cabri Brown and the comments that she made, because were it about nine foot tall, as the one is in Grantham Cemetery, I think, guessing, um, I might have gone for it. But but no, this is a tiny, almost insulting size um, for anybody uh, um, who, who was to look at it. Um, so even, we're, we're repeating everything that's been said. Can, I, can we please move on? Because and Yeah, can... so basically, I hopefully have made the case. I said earlier, I think that if we need a policy to refer to, the EN6 um, rather covers it, everything. It's, it is very comprehensive. I actually have read again the 5.3.5, and I think that, that there is, I don't agree at all that there's, I, I totally agree with Councillor Dilts. I do not think that there's a positive statement coming forward there, neutral at best, a number of negative comments in there from the heritage officer. So I would like to, to um, leave that. Thank you, Charmaine. Joe, who was next on the speaking list, please? Mr. Chairman, just while I'm picking up the next name, Martha's asked to come in as well, and I don't know if that relates directly to something that's just been said. Does it, Martha? 
Uh, yes, Mr Chairman, it's just to reiterate to members that whilst they appear to be toying with refusal or deferral, just wanted to highlight to members that the deferral, the committee would obviously give uh, pointers that they needed issue on with the deferral, but that if they were to give a pointer on, say, design, then the applicant would obviously be free to re-look at that. That application would then probably be reconsulted on with your heritage officer, conservation officer, etc. cetera. Um, so um, some of the points that um, the members are raising when discussing refusal could also be accommodated with a deferral. Um, a deferral would could potentially then avoid, you know, an appeal as opposed to a refusal would give the applicant the opportunity to appeal. Thank you, Chairman. OK, let's go. Back, let's go back to the speakers and let's bring Joe. Who's the next speaker? Um, the next person on the list was Councillor Dilks, but I don't know whether he resolved everything he wanted to when he made his proposition. Phil? Well, I was going to uh, come back with the um, I didn't actually give reasons. I mean, Phil, can I, we can I, we just hear the other speakers before we go back to that, please? Would you oh, mind? Oh, forgive me. No, that's fine. Thank you. Who's uh, Councillor who's Exton it? next? Mike, Mike Exton, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mainly, I've uh, been on this parade many times, as uh, Councillor Dawkins will uh, say. Yeah. But what the I consider it's in the wrong place, mainly because for, from the, our experience at Stamford, if it's in the main square and the amount of people you, you get, invariably you will have to close the square, and the extra cost of road closures. Who will bear the cost? My, that's a question what? for probably for deferral to sort these little things out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mike. Now, uh, Joe, who, who's down here that we haven't heard from? Councillor Bisnath Singh now. Harish? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It was a long time ago. I think quite a lot of points have been covered, but mainly I, want, I wanted to reinforce that. Uh, paragraph 5.3.5, especially the last line on it, as the conservation of officer was quite categoric about it when he say when he detracts from the listed buildings, and that want to uh, I, I want to reinforce that because it clearly he doesn't quite agree with the advice, which even though he's gone along with it but she quite strongly said at the end of it, and this is a classic, a, Ian Wright was quite to the point uh, towards the end of it. But I fully support uh, the proposal uh, uh, Councillor Dilks uh, put forward. Okay, so um, I don't know, uh, Mike, were you, were you thinking in terms of uh, seconding Ian Selby's proposal for deferral? Can't hear anything coming back from Mike Exton. So as far as I can see, we've only got one proposition. I'll second for deferral. Yeah, sorry, okay. So we've got two. Uh, Thank you, Mike. So uh, let's move on with a vote and we take the basically the deferral was an amendment. So we will take that one first. So uh, Shelley, are you Mr. ready with the chairman? Can we just double check with Martha whether she would be comfortable with that? Because I'm, I'm not sure whether it would constitute an amendment or whether you'd have to defeat the original proposition first. Well, I'll, can I, I'll, can I'll, take, Sorry. I'll, ta I'll take a suggestion. Yes, Martha. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, I agree with Joe that a proposal was put forward and seconded for refusal. Um, that became the substantive motion. And then an amendment was put forward for deferral. So there would need to be a vote to make the deferral the substantive motion and then a vote on, the, and, and if that passed, then a vote on uh, deferral if it, if it was passed. Awesome. So I'm right to take the deferral motion of de deferral proposal first. No, will you not butt in? If you want to speak, when I'm speaking to somebody else, please put it in the chat box. Now, Martha. You are in part correct, Chairman, in that, yes, you would take a vote on the deferral in order to see whether that became the substantive motion. And then depending whether that falls or passes, you would then take a second vote uh, dependent on the outcome. Um, and if it, if it falls, we then move on to fill the the uh, proposal to refuse. It, 
I, yes, Chairman, if it fell, then you would yeah. take a vote on the refusal. If it yeah. passed, you would then take another vote on the deferral being the substantive, substantive motion. Yeah, yeah, I thought I was right. <laughs> OK, uh, Shelley. Do we have the reasons for deferral clearly spelled out, please, Mr yeah. Chairman? Chairman, can I come in here? Um, the, the, the two uh, main reasons that you could, uh, um, um, I, I know you said get away with, that's not what I meant, but two reasons which would be reasonable. One, so that um, um, a heritage impact statement could be uh, submitted. And uh, secondly, to um, enable, <coughs> excuse me, to enable a wider consultation to take place in respect of the application. Okay, I'm, co I'm comfortable Mr. with those. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, surely that was a matter for the applicant to have done. This has been around for a long time. And even on the weekend, you know, the vicar didn't even know anything about it. And it's supposed yeah, to be a religious symbol. Oh. Yeah, this is us. nonsense we're talking. We should go. We should refuse it. A deferral is. We just, you know, I, I just don't see. Sometimes I will propose a, a deferral, but I just do not see that it is valid to have a deferral. Well, this we should have, be refused. Phil, and Phil, then, Phil, as Phil, Phil, has said, we Phil, should, they Phil, should go stop you there, please. We we they want to do something sensible. Sorry, yeah, we've, Bob. We've, we've got a proposal to defer. Which we've got to take before your proposal to refuse. That okay. is the that is the procedure we have to go through, whether we like it or agree with it or not. So I'm going to ask Shell Shelley to uh, take a vote on deferral, uh, and then we'll talk to Will about. Well, we've got the reasons. Uh, we've got two of the reasons for full full consultation and uh, 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 heritage impact assessment. Uh, so so that be the. If we're against deferral, uh, Bob, and we want refusal, we should vote against deferral. Correct. So if you, yes, yeah. So Correct. if you vote against deferral, that that, that pro proposition falls. Yeah, absolutely correct, Phil. Okay, Shelley. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor David Bellamy. Against. Councillor Parish Bisnassing. Against. Councillor Helen Crawford. Against. Councillor Phil Dilks. Against. Councillor Mike Exton. For. Councillor Rosemary Cabry Brown. For. Councillor Penny Milnes. Um, against. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Against. Councillor Robert Reed. Against. Councillor Ian Selby. For. Councillor Mrs Judy Smith. Against. Chairman Councillor Bob Adams. Against. Two, four, six. So that, to me, that's nine three against deferral. That's correct, Chairman. Thank you. So that that proposition falls, and we now move on to a proposition to refuse. And proposition to refuse, and we'll go straight there, I think, because I don't think we're going to get a great deal more out of any further debate. Uh, Phil, can you give the reasons for deferral, please? I'm happy to. Um, my suggested reasons would be that it's contrary to local plan policy DE1, which says all development proposals will be expected to make a positive contribution to the locality with no adverse impact on the street scene. Um, uh, reason two would be contrary to policy EN6, the local plan, uh, which says development that is likely to cause harm to the significance of a heritage asset or its setting will only be granted where public benefits of the proposal outweigh the potential harm. And thirdly, um, I believe it's contrary to paragraph 127 of the NPPF, uh, which says that we have a duty to ensure that developments will function well and add to the quality of the area, are visually attractive as a result of good architecture layout and sympathetic to local character and history. I believe it fails all those. Thank you, Phil. Will, could you give a, uh, a quick heads up on that one, please, or Martha? Or both? 
Um, yeah, I, I, I uh, think those reasons are um, valid reasons. And and uh, defend, defendable as a, as a, 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 a appeal. Mm. Yeah, yes, indeed. Um, as I said earlier, it's it's one of these things that could go either way. Uh, the conservation officer um, what wasn't entirely supportive, um, and there wasn't a, a, an impact uh, statement. However, she did say that, um, and this is the key here, um, she did say that the proposal would detract from the listed building and conservation area and uh, in that you can read harm uh, it would cause harm and the legislation uh, listed building legislation um, <clears throat> gives uh, or um, transfers the obligation to a local planning authority it's a legal obligation to ensure that no harm is caused to a conservation area or listed building it, it, the wording is uh, um, you should ensure that um, there should be no harm and you uh, protect uh, th these areas and so therefore you've got very good grounds to um, defend this refusal if, if you decide to refuse Thank you for that, Will. Uh, Charmaine, I think you seconded Phil Dilch, did. did you? Are you happy with the reasons? Yes, I, yes, he's included what I'd suggested, and I think I did more, so yes. Thank you. Please, may, we'll I, move, we'll please move may I give my usual spiel before we go to the vote and, and just to remind members that under the virtual meeting protocol that where somebody proposes to refuse an application contrary to officer recommendations we automatically invoke the calling off period so the vote you'll be taking today will be a recorded vote and it will be that you are minded to refuse the application any member who votes in favour that they are minded to refuse the application will have five working days to submit their reasons for refusal to the Head of Development Management who will then give you the full analysis at a future meeting where you'll take another recorded vote. At that point, you won't be fettered by how you vote today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Take a breath now. <laughs> OK, are, are we all clear on what we are doing uh, in terms of voting for refusal? DE1, EN6 and 127 of the MPPF. And I'm, for, I'm sure Phil will help us all by uh, putting that into word, wording and letting us all have it. Uh, Mr Chairman, I'm happy to do that, of course. Um, I'm just a little bit, and it, and it is a given that the calling off period has been called into question lately, um, I accept that it's there now, but we seem, I, I understood that the calling off period would only be invoked if we hadn't managed to convince the head of planning at the meeting that the, that the reasons for refusal may not be valid. So, so why do we need to be, um, what Mr Richards has already given that they are valid, uh, he considers them valid. What we're asking him to do if we go through the calling off period is to do, to do a whole lot more work and then uh, list it again at a future meeting, not take a, a proper decision today or a final decision today. Uh, so I'm just, I, I'd be advised, obviously, but um, I, I just wonder if we do need to go to the calling off period. Well, in this according, case. To, according to the Constitution, if we were meeting physically, Phil, what you're saying is absolutely right because we would have the opportunity of getting agreement from the uh, head of planning that those are sustainable uh, and supportable reasons. Uh, because of COVID, technically we can't meet as, a, meet as a body together and we're all over the place. And I think which is, well, I mean that, I mean we're all in different locations. As I understand it, they the, the brought the uh, five-day cooling off period to enable members to go back and reflect uh, and then come back with, a, uh, with the uh, confirmed reasons for refusal. And I think we're stuck with that at the minute, uh, Phil. It is in mind, my mind. I haven't spoken to Robert about that. But I think we could actually uh, do the, uh, the Constitution, the Book of Constitution, as far as planning is concerned, and go back and have a look at the, uh, the uh, COVID protocols. Um, it might be that we're still left with the same thing, Phil, but I think we do need pro we do need to go back and look at the protocols that we brought in in March, every March, April, whenever it was, not knowing what we were dealing with in terms of COVID, but we've now got a clearer idea. And I think it would be the right time to uh, go back and uh, re have a fresh look at it and review it. But I think as of today, Phil, I think we have to go through the uh, established COVID, pro uh, COVID protocols that 
uh, we agreed way back in February, uh, February, March time or, or when. I appreciate March. your uh, clarification, Mr. Chairman. I hadn't realised that's why we've um, why it had got changed. I haven't yeah. appreciated yeah. that. Thank I'd you. I'd agree with you, Chairman. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. OK, so uh, we, do we all understand where we're going with this? I hope so. Uh, so I'm going to call on Shelley to uh, call the vote, please. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor David Bellamy. Four. Councillor Harish Bisnell Singh. Four. Councillor Helen Crawford. Four. Councillor Phil Dilks. Four. Councillor Mike Exton. Against. Councillor Mrs. Rosemary Cabry Brown. Councillor Cabry Brown. Hi. Are you there, Rosemary? Yes, abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Penny Milnes. Four. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Four. Councillor Robert Reed. Four. Ian Selby. Abstain. Councillor Mrs. Judy Smith. Four. And Chairman Councillor Bob Adams. Four. And uh, that, that again is carried uh, nine, nine with three abstentions. Um, I have nine four, Chairman, um, one against and two abstentions. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Thank you. So, so we can move on now to the final item on the agenda as far as uh, um, determinations are concerned. Uh, S20-0940, has uh, uh, Peter Mosley joined the meeting? <coughs> he doesn't look like he has, Mr Chairman, no. Fine, so we, we have no speakers on this one and uh, rapidly going to his papers. Uh, Stephen Cadman, please. And Stephen's on leave this week, Mr. Chairman, so uh, it's me again for this one, I'm afraid. Fooled again. Welcome back, Chris. <laughs> Thanks. Just bear with me a second while I load up my presentation. I'd be grateful if you could let me know, Mr. Chairman, when uh, you can view the presentation, please. Oh, just on the screen now, Chris. Excellent. Thank yes, you. Uh, see it. It's relatively quick, this one, so I'll, I'll, I'll try not to hang around. There's only a few slides. Um, but yes, this application is for the change of use from agricultural land to a mixed agriculture and leisure use, uh, which comprises general agriculture, allotments and dog agility on the land. Uh, the site is adjacent to Hakenby Grange off Stainfield Road, or, or the A15 um, at Stainfield. The key issues raised as part of this application are the impact on the character and appearance of the area, impact on neighbouring residential amenity and flooding and drainage impacts. The application site location uh, comprises the, the whole site now in front of you, so all nine of those parcels. Uh, the proposal is, is split, so it, it's itemised within the submitted design and access statement with the application, what each parcel is for. Effectively, all the parcels shown there um, are mainly for either farming, so agricultural use or, or grazing land, with the exception of 5A, 5B, 5D and 5C, which you can see uh, are next to the lay-by. So 5A and 5B are a mix of uh, leisure uses and personal dog agility use, with 5D and 5C for um, residential allotments or garden allotment use. Um, and all the others, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8 and 9 are all for agricultural use. The dog agility use I've mentioned uh, in light of recent applications that have come forward to committee is purely for personal dog agility use for anybody that wishes to take the dog onto the land. There's no business proposed to be run at all. The applicant is, is the parish council. There's no business venture at all proposed. Uh, that's the, the red line around the site. So you can see the site is located uh, directly off the A15 uh, to the north of Morton and Hanthorpe, which is to the south of the site, um, and west of Hakenby and east of Stainfield. The site is accessed, I don't know if you can just make out, there's a slight curve to the right hand side of that red line. That's because that's, the, that's a lay by off the A15 and the site will be accessed from that lay by. 
and there's a picture showing the entrance into the site, so that's the existing field gate into the site uh, from the existing lay-by, which will also provide parking provision as well and access to the site. And then finally, the, in terms of evaluation of the, the application, so there's no harm to the character and appearance of the surrounding area considered. There's no built form proposed at all on the site. Uh, there's no harm considered to, to neighbouring residential amenity uh, due to the site location and, and distance to dwellings. Uh, there's no increase in, in risk of flooding elsewhere, again, with no built form proposed on the site at all. There is a condition proposed, which is condition three, to control future changes of use. So condition three, you'll see set out in the report, limits use of the site to those specified in the design and access statement, which were the, the split of parcels into agricultural land, grazing land, uh, small areas for dog agility and small areas for allotments, uh, as I set out. Uh, like I said, Haken and Stainfield Parish Council are the applicants for this application. There's been no objections received, that's both from statutory consultees and uh, no members of the public objections. The application is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chris. Although Peter Mosley isn't here, I did speak to him last night and he indicated that he, uh, had he been able to get here, he would have spoken uh, in favour of the uh, recommendation for approval. Uh, so there are no no speakers. Uh, anybody, any questions for the case officer, please? Yes, please. Carry on, Charmaine. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's just a, a, a quick one. You, we, I notice in the papers is reference to not parking on the footpath, but it's a lay by. Um, has there been any consideration on the potential actual amenity of the lay by itself? If people, for example, are going into the allotments and parking up there on a lovely sunny day or whatever, have we looked at any impact of that? Because obviously laybys are there for a reason. Thank you, Charmaine. Chris? Yeah, uh, thank you, Councillor Morgan. Uh, the proposed use is, is very, very minimal. So yes, whilst there, there are allotments proposed and there is a, a small area for leisure use or dog agility use, in terms of actual use of that site and the number of cars and when those cars are going to turn up, it's going to be very, very minimal. There are very small areas of the site proposed for those sorts of uses. Therefore, in terms of any traffic generation, it's not considered to be a large traffic attractor. Effectively, it will just be sort of the odd person coming and going from that site. So the, the, the lay-by is very big, it, it's, it's highway land, so the county council effectively are in charge of the lay-by. Um, so yes, there's not considered to be any sort of adverse impact on the lay-by from additional parking provision on it. Thank you, otherwise a good idea. Thank you. Sorry, thank you, Charmaine. There's no other questions uh, in the chat box. Uh, do we oh, need a debate Councillor on Councillor Crawford, Mr Chairman, and then Councillor Bisnorth Singh. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking in the wrong. I do beg your pardon. Um, right, Helen, sorry. Thank you. Um, just in answer to um, Councillor Charmaine Morgan, that is a very, very, very big lay-by. Um, you could get 30 cars in there, no problem. Thank, Thank you, you, Helen. Thank you. Harish? Yes, Mr Chairman, thank you. I wonder if Chris could clarify, what is stone pit fill? Well, what, what do they do in the stone pit? That's number nine. Plot number nine. Thank you, Councillor Business. Uh, plot number nine it, it, it simply that's the name given to that field. It's just a local name, I think, given to the field. It, it, it doesn't have any bearing on the application. That field itself is, is proposed in the design and access statement for grazing land. So six, seven, eight are agricultural. Um, and nine is for grazing, so I think it's just the name. I think that the whole site generally is known as the parish land because the parish own it, and some of it is tenanted out either to local people or to the, I think the county council are tenants of some of the land as well. So no, plot number nine forms part of the application, um, but plot number nine is, is shown as grazing land. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Chris. Yeah, fantastic presentation, all throughout. Uh, those you have done, but I fully support that. Same like you know, it, it, it's a welcome open field for for the people for the community to enjoy. Thank you for that, Harris. There's nobody else wishing to ask a question. I don't think. Can I propose to go to that oh, official recommendation, Mr. Just, Chairman? You can second it because Helen Crawford has uh, already indicated in the chat box that she would like to propose it. So we have, it, we have it proposed and seconded to, uh, to approve the officer recommendation. Can we move to a vote, please? Thank Shelley? You. Thank you. Councillor David Bellamy? Four. Councillor Harish Biznassing? Four. 
Councillor Helen Crawford. Four. Councillor Phil Dilks. Four. Councillor Mike Exton. Four. Councillor Mrs Rosemary Cabry Brown. Four. Councillor Penny Milnes. Four. Councillor Charmaine Morgan. Four. Councillor Robert Reed. Four. Councillor Ian Selby. Four. Councillor Mrs Judy Smith. Four. And Chairman Councillor Bob Adams. Four. Unanimous, Chairman. Unanimous? Yes, yeah. Chairman. It was Mr Chairman, I think you're currently muted. Um, just bear with me a moment, I will just... Okay, sorry, can you all hear me? Yeah. Yes, Mr Chairman. You can hear me, okay. Item 13 on the agenda, any other business which the Chairman, by reason of special circumstances, decides is urgent. <coughs> there is one, as, as many of you may know, uh, this is Jo Toomey's last meeting of the Planning Committee. Uh, she is going on to pastures new, and I would just like, on behalf of all of us, to make a presentation to her. Oh, oh goodness. Sort of voice. Uh, oh, no, where is she going? She's yeah. going to give her a, a, a peck on the cheek. Oh, no. Bert, where is she going? Thank you for all the hard work you've done over the years. And, uh, sorry to be losing you. Wish you well in your new endeavours and your new you. career. And, uh, we hope oh. you will see you again in the Thank you so much. That's lovely. Oh, oh, thank you. We are going to so they're all clapping. Um, yeah, yeah. It's all going. Okay, so we are really sorry to lose you, Joe, but I'm sure all of us wish you well for the future. Thank and, you. Uh, when you've got nothing to do, pop in and see us. <laughs> and help us out, Joe. So, yeah. is the council losing, Joe, then, may I ask? Yeah, are you going all together, Joe, or just from the planning committee? No, I'm, I'm moving to Nottinghamshire County Council. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh. God. Yeah. Right. It would help if you were, if it, it would help if you spoke <laughs> one at a time. Yeah, Mr Chair, can I speak? Well, Charmaine was speaking in, so let Charmaine that finish. Yeah, um, f well, first of all, Joe, I'd, I'd just like to say it's safer here if you'd like to read. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my dog's agreeing with me, okay. sorry. Um, I'd just like to thank you for all the work and effort and everything you've done over many, many years. Um, you have been wonderful, above and beyond, every day. Thank you. Okay, anybody else wish to say anything? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I'd like to, uh, please, because Joe's helped me out so many times, and I shall miss her so much, and I'm so sorry she's going. And that's Thank Rosemary. You. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you. Phil, I'll go along. Ian, you, you've been trying for a while, haven't you? So Thank you, Mr. Yes, Chair, yes like, yeah. got you. Well, well, I've known Joe for, for many years now, and, and Joe, jo, I was have to say to you, you've been an absolutely wonderful officer. You know, if, if ever there's there's... So a point of, of order or something that needs correcting, you're always there and you, you, you've you been a brilliant support. 
I am so, so disappointed to hear this news, Joe. I'd obviously, I wish you well in, in your future career. Um, I hope we're going to see you around town. I'm, I mean, I know you're, you're involved with, with the, the Arts Centre. I hope we're going to see you, see you there. You've done some wonderful work there as well, Joe. Um, and, and when I was the mayor as well, you know, you was you was wonderful in in in, in support and doing things. Then, um, Joe, I, I'm I can't tell you. I really am sorry to, to this news, but I so so wish you well. Um, thank you so much for everything you've done. You, you've you've been a wonderful servant to this council, Joe. And, and Nottingham, well, they're, they're going to get a cracking good officer. They really are. So wish you well, Joe. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very in. much. Well, well, sure. I, I very much um, uh, support what Ian said, Joe. You're first, first class and better officer. Um, every time I've, you know, in the years I've been on, which isn't as many as uh, Ian I know, but um, every time if I have a problem, I know where to come to get it sorted. I go to Joe, and um, what amazes me always is within two or three minutes you've emailed me back with the solution. I just I don't I don't know what we're going to do without you. Seriously, I think you're a huge loss to this council, and I I, I congratulate you and thank you for everything you've done. And and like Ian and, and others, I really wish you well. Nottingham, it's our loss, but Nottingham shares gain. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Can Who I is speak? next? Pardon? Yep. Who is yep. next? Can I speak, please? Who is Can I speak? Judy. G yes, Judy. To you, Judy. So you've been a wonderful person, but always so helpful. And I remember when you first came to work um, at the district council, and you came to the scrutiny meetings when Ken Joinson was chairman of um, scrutiny, and I think I was vice chairman. But you've always been so helpful, and I always knew if I could speak to Joe. I would get help and a right answer. I wish you all the very best, Joe, and I am so, so sorry that you're leaving us. Very best wishes. Joe, uh, yes, Mike. All, all the very best. We've known each other for a long time, but in two years' time, why don't you try the other, the other side of the fence, the members? No comments. <laughs> I, think I couldn't possibly yeah. comment on that one, Councillor Exton. <laughs> All the best, Joe. Thank you. Can Anybody I else wishing to say anything? Yes, please, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Can I say, yes, uh, Joe, this has been a shock to me, especially. You have been extremely helpful. I agree with everything what has been said so far. It's very what Ian said, Phil said, and Mike. You've been a great help for, for me whenever I needed information or so anything like that. I always drop you a line and you come with it very, very quickly. I think you, you'll be very sorely missed by us, by the members. And I think it's a, it's a, you're a great loss to us. I think I uh, would love to see you if you can reconsider. Thank you, Harish. Chairman, can I, as an officer, just... Uh, of course, have Will, yes. Just my two panelists. I've only just been uh, with the authority for about four months, um, so I'm a new boy. Um, but in that short time, um, I, I've noticed how professional uh, Joe has been and so very, very efficient. Now, I've been in planning over 40 years, um, mainly in local government, but also in consultancy. But uh, since I've been doing interim work, I've been working for 32 different councils in the last 12 years. And I can honestly say in the last 40 years, and certainly in the last uh, 12 years when I've been doing interim work, I haven't come across anybody uh, doing this type of work as efficient. And uh, let's face it, without somebody in this key role being so efficient, then it would be very difficult. And so you will be a very hard act to follow, Joe. Um, I wish you well in your future career. Thank you very much. Thank you, Will. Any when do you leave, Joe? My last working day is this Friday, although I'm popping back for Cabinet because you just can't keep me away. Please, David or Penny. David, Penny, Penny, David, I don't, as you sort it out. <laughs> uh, good luck, Joe. Um, I hope you're not sending emails out at seven and eight o'clock at night at Nottinghamshire County Council because it shouldn't have to happen. 
Exactly. But also, you can't go yet because they're in lockdown, so you just have to hang about for a little while longer. I've got a little bit of leave first, so hopefully they'll have sorted it all out by then. <laughs> will you be staying in the Grantham area, Joe? I will, yes, yeah. Oh, good. Penny? We'll see you around. Yes, well, I'd just like to say it's very sad, Joe. Um, on top of everything everybody said, your efficiency, your professionalism, you're beyond helpful, you're impressively helpful, and in no time at all. Um, but one thing I've always admired you for is you're so incredibly calm. Yeah. And, um, you've helped me very much, and um, I do wish you well, and I, I think you'll be very much missed. Thank you. Are you in the office yeah. on Friday? Are you actually going to be in the office on Friday? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm in the office on Tuesday, and, and that'll be that'll be it. What, next Tuesday yeah. is your last actual in-day? Yeah. Thank Could you. I just say, yeah. it's Helen. Could I just say, Joe, well done. Congratulations. Wishing you every future happiness. I just don't know what we're going to do without you. No, I don't. I don't. I really don't. You will be so missed. Thank so, you. Good luck and stay safe. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Everybody, everybody finished speaking. Can we close the meeting now? Thank you very much for your contributions and... Uh, uh, look forward to seeing you all on the next occasion. If I have been a little bit irritable today, uh, do forgive me. I had, was up very early this morning. You've been marvellous, Mr Chairman. You're quite right, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Take, take care, all. Thank see you. Soon. you.